Well, my expectations um, when I got here was one, to be very successful, and two, to put UMBC on the soccer map. Um, they had some success in the 70s. Baltimore was the hotbed of college soccer. The University of Baltimore, Loyola, UMBC, national powers. Um, but in the 80s, it was a big drop off when it went to Division I level. But my goal, and I, I came in as a very confident coach, was to put us on the map. And it wasn't going to be easy, but we were going to get the word out that we were going to recruit all the best uh, players in the area and that we weren't going to take the second best. And I think the mentality that we did, we changed from the very beginning. And the success we had with that very first team helped that. And the next couple of years, we had some tremendous teams and seasons and great recruiting classes. And I think that was the, the stepping stone to really change um, what was happening here at UMBC. And well, I think, you know, one word is it is a passion to win. So you look around and you, you try to stay updated on what's going on. You have your philosophy of how you want to coach. Um, you know, I went through being a really, really young coach and competing at the national level and getting an opportunity to learn a lot as a young coach. And, you know, you had your ups and downs. So you get to the point where you're finally at the Division I level. And I had supreme confidence in myself throughout this whole time of coaching. Um, so that when you do get to a level and you see times are changing, you have to adjust with it. You don't have to change everything about yourself or what you do, but you do have to change with the times. And athletes change along with it. So I think I was always pretty easy to, to change with the athletes, but still have my philosophy of what I wanted to do. There's certain things that will never have changed. Um, it wouldn't change if I was still coaching 20 years from now as far as the rules, some of the rules and regulations. But I think you do adapt to it. Um, and, and you got to get a feel. You know, I've always been called a player's coach. And I, I take that when I was first started, I took that kind of personally, like, what does that mean? You know, your player's coach. Um, but now I, I take it more as a compliment because I do listen to the players. I do have conversations with the players. I think communicating with the players, but also making sure they were aware um, that I was the coach and the final decision was always going to be mine. And I probably had that, adopted that at a young age because when I first coached, coached some really good teams and at the national level, uh, some of the players might be three or four years younger than me. And so I always wanted them to, I wanted to earn their respect and I demanded their respect, but also wanted to be able to communicate with them and not let them feel like, who do I think I am because I'm the head coach. And I've been very fortunate. I think I looked the other day, now that I have time on my hand, I think there's close to 60 or 70 play, former players that are either still coaching or have coached uh, which means there's a lot of guys out there, former retrievers that are out there coaching or into coaching. And it's a compliment to what we've done and our staff. But I still feel that when you preach family, that they should be the ones that you're looking at ideally as the first um, wave of bringing them back in. And you don't have to go back over with them and, and kind of talk about new things. Basically, they understand when you come back and if you're part of our family, um, it just continues on and on. I think with the more success we've had, the more I became animated out there. Um, that wasn't by design, that just was a, a feeling. You know, people would say, man, I've never seen you act like that or hurt. And some of the times, to be honest with you, I probably didn't even know that I was that animated or that vocal. But it just really does become a passion for the game. You know, once the game started and the whistle blew, um, there wasn't anyone out there that wanted to win more than me or wanted to do well. So I think sometimes, I think especially the older I got, um, you know, the earlier there's a lot of pictures of me kind of like just standing there like this or watching. Or, um, but I think the older you get, the more you get into it and uh, you never know when your last game's going to be. So I, I think at times, especially the last couple of years, I've always had that mentality that even when we got to the Final Four, we want to get back um, and we're not going to just sit, sit on it. And that was very important to me. I, I'll be honest, with you, I've had so many great memories. Um, that you know the final four was the ultimate uh you know for us to get to that point play in national tv get to the national semifinals play well enough to win coulda shoulda woulda won a national championship um that was that was the dream and the dream was this far from 
being accomplished, but there's so many other great accomplishments. And, and for me, probably, as I look at it now, because I feel it now, the relationships that I formed with the players were just as important to me. You know, when I still see a Giuliano Salenza, and Giuliano Salenza didn't know what college he wanted to go to and was offered a full ride to go to Clemson, um, and he decided not to go to Clemson, and he was one of the best players in the country, and he came here, and he helped us win a championship. Well, when I see Giuliano Salenza now, and he's very successful, and he has his degree, and he has his family, um, and we constantly communicate, and he uh, obviously supports us, that means so much to me. And it's funny as it's going to sound, that means just as much as that Final Four, because the Final Four was an event that we dreamt of, but having those relationships with those guys, and they still come back and support me and, and the program, or did support me, um, means a lot, so. Well, it was a, it was a great run, you know. I, I really appreciated my time here, and I never would have expected to stay this long. Like I said, when I got here, I was doing really well, obviously, from a, from a local angle, and even at the national level with, with Essex. Um, and, and I loved coaching, I still love coaching. Um, and, and I came to a school that I, I had a lot of problems with as a player, and yet respected those guys, and still do, and respected the coaches. It was an incident that happened, but yet, you know, I, I didn't hold it, I, I didn't hold it against any of them. And, and I turned around and my family, you know, we've all loved UMBC. I got a chance to coach here. My kids came to school here. They loved it. It's, it's, I've watched UMBC grow from a little commuter school to a nationally ranked school and just about everything. I, I've had fun working here. I, I think me and my wife talk about it a lot. You know, one of the reasons I'm, I feel sad about retiring is I loved my job, you know, and I love the place. There's not, I never, I never came to work. It wasn't work. It was me coming and doing something that I loved and being around a lot of great people. And I always tried to make it fun too when I got here. So when I would get here every day, um, I've watched the, the, the place grow because too many times when I first started, everybody was very serious about in, in the halls and everybody was serious about their job. And you know, coaching is a serious job, but then again, you have to have some fun. You tell the players to have fun. Well, as coaches and employees, we should also enjoy it. So, you know, there's probably wasn't a day I, I could, you know, other than the death in my family or something, where I didn't come to work and one, enjoy getting here, two, have fun while I was here. Um, I could have been mad at the team. I could have worked them really hard. I could have lost, which is never, the, the day after is never fun. Um, but my, my mentality of in this building or around the people was always the same that, you know, it was, it was, I was never gonna walk around or not talk to people or not communicate or not worry about them. I, I think too many times here at UMBC, coaches came worried about themselves um, and never lasted. But I worried about, didn't worry, but I hoped and wished well for everybody. And if I could help people, I would. Obviously being born and raised here in Baltimore, and I have a lot of contacts. When new coaches came in or new ADs or whatever, I was always there to try to help them because I wanted people to come here and feel good about Baltimore. I wanted people to feel good about UMBC um, because it's easy to criticize the place until you really find out what it's like. And me, like you, Steve Levy, um, we've been here a long time and we're from the area, so there's a lot of good things about UMBC that, that I'll miss. Um, but obviously my family, my son's still here coaching. Um, Anthony's still here coaching. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that, that I want to continue to communicate with. So I'll be around, I come out, um, you know, I'll, I'll be, maybe I'll be bugging people as I go through this, but clearly it's something I enjoy doing. I loved what I do, I did. Um, I had a lot of success, a lot of success that I had dreamt about. So to achieve your goals um, is, is, a great, is a great feeling because I'm not leaving really with any regrets. And I think that's the most important thing. And I think we put UMBC on the map nationally in soccer. And I'm not going anywhere unless somebody tells me I can't come here. I can't park my car down there illegally um, or, or wherever I want to do what, what I want to do. Uh, I'll be around and uh, you know, eventually somebody's going to get tired of me and tell me that I, I can't come around anymore. And we'll probably try to get that guy fired. Coach, Liam Paddock beaming in from the UK. 
quick message to say a massive congratulations uh, on a wonderful UMBC career uh, and a huge thank you again for everything that you did for me during my time at the university. About 14 years ago now, I think, since you made the decision to start me over Joe Green and uh, my goodness, imagine how differently things might have turned out in both of our careers if you hadn't made that call back then. Um, seriously, thank you. <laughs> uh, all the best for a restful retirement. Uh, hope that you're going to be able to spend loads of time with your family, kids and grandkids. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Hey coach, wanted to stop by and give you a quick word of thanks and gratitude for all that you've done for the UMBC men's soccer program. You made such a positive impact on all of our lives as we came through the program, ensuring that we would have success both when we were there on campus and then going forward in our lives. Being a mentor is one of the most important things a coach can do, and you certainly did that better than most. Enjoy retirement. Thank you for all that you've done, and enjoy the grandkids. Hey, coach. Congratulations. Um, amazing, amazing career. Um, what you've done, not only on the field, but the hundreds, if not thousands, of kids and young men that you've had such a positive impact in their life. And I just want to say thank you from me. Uh, one, for giving me the opportunity to play at UMBC. Um, have a wonderful retirement. Enjoy it. I'm hoping that you'll take up golf so you can play in the Men's Golf Championship. Um, enjoy the family. Enjoy all of the special moments that you have, you deserve it. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Hey coach, congratulations on an amazing career. You've made such a positive impact on countless student athletes over the 30 plus years that you've been at UMBC and just a, a great impact on uh, the sport of soccer overall. So I wish you nothing but the best in retirement. Coach, Jason Dieter here. Honored to step on the field with you in your first year at UMBC. Honored to be here tonight celebrating your storied career. Proud to call you my coach and my friend. Enjoy retirement. Hey coach, Bobby Wagner here. To the true big dog of the program, congratulations on your success and your career. I couldn't have done anything without you. Love you, man. Coach, congratulations on your retirement. I uh, really wish I could be there, but today is my 28th wedding anniversary. And since my wife is now in charge of my playing time and you no longer are, uh, I had to make a tough call or she made a tough call. Anyway, I can't be there, but I wanted to say congratulations. I also wanted to say thank you for everything you've done for me. Um, on the field, off the field, in my personal life, you have been just such a great uh, role model and uh, just such a, a great person of influence and I'm eternally grateful. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Coach. Congrats on your retirement. Super happy for you. What an amazing journey it's been for you on and off the field. Um, the many lives that you've impacted at UMBC. Um, we've been blessed to be able to uh, have you as a coach, a mentor. Um, you're a man of great integrity, leadership, and men that have impacted so many lives. Um, on your next journey, we wish you nothing but the best. And I'm looking forward to see you in the stand um, next year. Love you. Hey Pete, Steve Z. Hey, I want to wish you a happy retirement. Um, 20 seconds doesn't leave me a lot of time, but um, I've known you as a player, as playing against you, as a, an assistant coach with you, and followed you on my happiest day watching you become the head coach of UMBC. I knew the, I knew the program was in good hands and was going to have some great results in its future. Pete, you're the ultimate player's coach. I've always said that. You, you treat everyone with the utmost respect and all you do consistently is win. So congratulations on your retirement. Thank you for leaving the program in such good hands. And I hope I'll be celebrating with you soon. Have a good one, Pete. Bye now. Coach Karinji, we've been coaching together at UMBC since 1995. Where has the time gone? I know one thing for sure, I'm a better coach of having been with you all these years. You know, they say that a good coach can change a game, but a great coach can change lives. You have spent your entire coaching career helping others to be better at what they do. You should be celebrated for that. It is my fondest wish that you enjoy your retirement. Good luck at the gaming tables and congratulations on a stellar career. All the best, my friend. 
Well, then I go to uh, UMBC. And I'll tell you one thing, Coach Karinji, Pete Karinji has been there. He's, he's a, a Baltimore legend. He's been there, I think, now 31 years. He coached, coached in the pro league prior to MLS um, and, and is a great influencer in Baltimore soccer. But, um, you know, when I came in, you know, to, to UMBC from UNLV that first year, which was his first year, mind you, he's been there now 31 years. He's still there um, and, and making an impact on kids' lives. But when I went in there, I wasn't in shape. I thought it'd be easy. I'd just show up, you know, and everything be fine. He's like, look, if you don't get in shape, you're not going to play here either. So, so that was, that was like, that was, you know, that was when the life lessons really started for me. It's like self-assessment, looking within, not blaming others, things like that. Showing up on time. One time I went to go pick up a buddy. We were the starting midfield in my junior year at UMBC. We were late coming back. We, did, we didn't play in the game. You know, I mean, it was just simple, like very simple, straightforward leadership type of stuff that he taught. But the biggest thing that I think that he taught me um, when, we, when we talk about influence, you know, coaches influencing lives and things like that, you know, that work ethic, like I talked about, was important. I did get in shape, you know, I, you know, I was, I, I was able to play. We won a lot of games together. It was a lot of fun, but I remember those relationships. But the one thing that Karinji taught me was when you get knocked down to get back up, right? Which sounds so old school in its way, but, um, but really I look back at times in my life where I had to face a challenge where like, you know, it was, it, you know, a big challenge. For example, in June, I was, I was diagnosed with colon cancer uh, and I had a surgery and uh it's the hardest hardest knock i've taken right mm -hmm. in the middle of chemo right now and basically you know his persistence on on and his leadership on teaching me life skills through soccer have helped me with that so uh i can't say enough about karinji pete i can't believe the time has finally come to say goodbye um, I know we'll see you. Lots more roaming up and down those hallways. Don't forget to come in to the office and get our weekly um, updates. We from Women's Lacrosse just want to say congratulations. We love you. We love you so much. <laughs> Pete, thank you for everything you did for Retriever Nation. I'm going to miss you in the office. I'm going to miss you pushing everybody's buttons, uh, spending time with you in Karinji Corner. Uh, but most of all, just miss uh, the greatness that you brought to this program and the love for your student athletes and for the school and for Baltimore. Um, so thank you and we'll miss you. Yeah, I certainly um, excited for, for Pete in this next chapter. Um, thinking back on his career, it's, it's amazing um, the success that he had and certainly uh, really unique uh, to be able to impact so many uh, student athletes and, and have the success that he has had over his uh, time. It's, it's really impressive. Uh, it's something that uh, as a coach you strive to sort of emulate, but uh, more than I think the wins on the field, certainly um, you know, the impact he's had on so many uh, classes of, of student athletes here. Um, from my group, there was groups before that, there's been groups after that that uh, only think fondness of, of Coach Pete and uh, still refer to him as coach. So he'll always be a coach for me and certainly uh, uh, anything that uh, he ever needs, he knows he's got my number and I will be uh, a call away and hopefully we get to see each other a lot more now. Coach Karenji, uh, you and I have been through a lot together. Um, almost all the victories achieved at uh, UMBC. I was there with you almost every step of the way. Um, you have set the standard so high for UMBC coaching and being just a UMBC uh, a person. Um, I'm gonna make the, a great Baltimore comparison. You were certainly the Brooks Robinson or the Johnny Unitas of this university when it comes to coaching. Um, I just want to say thank you for, as an alum, as a staff member, as you know, a person that, that is very uh, close to this university. Um, you have done so many wonderful things for the university and you're going to be sorely missed, but we, you hope we're going to, you're going to be around uh, for a lot of commentary on, on men's soccer moving forward. And I wish you the best of luck in your retirement. Thanks so much. Congratulations, Pop, on an amazing accomplishment. We're so, so proud of you. You deserve every bit of retirement. And I know two people that can't wait for you to come visit. Taxes. 
We love you. We love you, Pop. Taxes. Can you blow Pop a kiss? Hi, this is Sue Karinji. I wanted to tell my husband congratulations on your retirement. I uh, wish you health and happiness. And I know no matter what, you will always keep me laughing. I love you. From playing and coaching with him, it's been about 13 years now, a bunch of different games. So it's hard. I mean, playing wise, we won three championships. Um, so obviously those games are in there. Um, I still have memories of games where I would kick a bench and he would yell at me and scold me and do all those things. I have memories of me celebrating goals and him like getting on me after and all those things. So I, it's, I can't really narrow it down to one game. Obviously those championship games were pretty big. Um, and we did win a good amount when I was playing here, but it's just the overall experience of the father-son connection that I think that we had down was great. And um, I wouldn't trade a single second of it for being any different. Uh, putting my time with you, Pete, into words is really hard. I'll give it a shot. Uh, I'd like to personally thank you for believing in me all those years ago as a player and then continuing to give me an opportunity to coach and then to be mentored by you. And uh, hopefully um, our time together uh, hopefully has made you proud. I've been proud to continue on uh, to now continue your legacy here and continue the legacy of UMBC soccer. So I just wanted to thank you and I look forward to seeing you at many games and uh, continuing to build on what you've started. Thank you. Tell me what your Slurpee flavor is. Cola.